butterflies? Chances are you do, and if so, today you're in luck because we are at Butterfly World in beautiful, sunny Coconut Creek, Florida. I'm gonna show you around Butterfly World. We're going to obviously admire the beautiful butterflies as they flutter around us. They're everywhere. So let's go check out the butterflies. Welcome to Butterfly World. You are about to enter a paradise, Butterfly World. Giant aviaries, a butterfly farm, museum insectarium, flowering gardens, fountains, ponds, waterfalls, birds, and so much more. Let's go, I'm so excited. Here we go, entrance to exhibits. No return access one way. I can already see butterflies everywhere. Holy moly, I'm so excited. Oh my goodness gracious. Wow. I jokingly said before I came in here that I wanted to be swathed in butterflies. And I am. They're everywhere. Look at this one. Yeah, they're like as big as birds almost, some of them. There's one on me. Awesome. Okay. There are so many, so many butterflies. They're just, they're all over and they, they really are all over you as you're walking around, which is so cool. And also a little startling. I keep getting startled by them kind of flying in my face and touching me. It's like when something touches your arm and you just kind of startle. It's a butterfly. Attack of the butterflies, they're everywhere. Okay, well, what do I do now? There's a butterfly on my shoe. I don't want to disturb it. I guess this is where I live now. Definitely trying to be careful where I step. Look at that one. It looks like a leaf. Look at the markings on it. Look at this green and black one. I can hear the birds in the bird exhibit next door. We'll go there next. There are a few benches scattered throughout that you can sit at. And if you just sit still, they swarm all around you. a great place to admire some of the beautiful flowers that thrive in South Florida. As you exit, they do check you and your bags to make sure you don't have any hitchhiking butterflies. So there is a map at the entrance that you are handed and it's one way. So it's one way around Butterfly World, but once you pay for admission, you can go around as many times as you like. You just can't go back through doors that you came in through. And this is to protect the butterflies. Now we're making our way into stop number three, the hanging garden and butterfly emerging area. Within its protective case, the pupa is hard at work, transforming itself from a crawling, leaf-chewing critter into a flying, nectar-sipping beauty. Wow, so they are actually emerging from their pupa in here. Butterfly World releases up to 3,500 pupae each week from our butterfly farm and butterfly farms located in tropical countries around the world. They're hand raised for exhibit. None have been taken from the wild. Good to know, good to know. And there's one right there, ready to enter Butterfly World. I don't wanna leave the beautiful butterfly aviary, but I'm sure there's more cool stuff to see, so let's go, let's go see it. Some plants are available in the garden center, and I think this butterfly is interested in one. Now we're entering into part of the exhibit with different plants and trees, and this is a chocolate tree, the Ombrona cacao. 
This tree produces cocoa beans. Oh, we've got a little bit of a moment to ourselves here. There are a lot of people walking around, taking photographs, admiring the butterflies, but every once in a while, you get a moment where no one else is around. And you definitely want to watch your step because they're all over the ground. All I have is a quarter, so this better be one heck of a wish. And it will be. All right, let's make this wish. Okay, I made a good wish. Here we go. Yay! Wish come true. This delicate purple flower is called the Queen's Wreath. And I can see why. I can picture a wreath of these beautiful purple flowers on the head of a queen. And the butterflies seem to really like them. What do you guys think, huh? Queen's Wreath? Yeah. I'm going with it. I'm going with it. There's a misting area over here that probably feels really good on warm days. Today the sun's out, but it's nice and cool. It's in the 70s, so it's not needed. And I also don't want to take the camera in there. But if it gets warm, if you want a little misting, here you go. And I'm sure it helps to maintain the rainforest-like quality in the rainforest area. Here's the other side of the misting area. I chose the long way to get around it to avoid getting the camera wet. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do, right? Right, butterfly? Now we're going to make our way to the garden. Hello to Lindsay and okay. check to make sure no hitchhikers. So you have to make sure. Just give your little slitter a shake just to make sure nobody's hiding underneath. As you make your way from the main aviary and rainforest area into the next area, you get a little bit of a shakedown. You have to make sure that there's no hangers on, no butterflies attached to you so that you're not carrying them into the next area. And I just passed inspection, I'm all clear. So let's go. We are now exiting the tropical rainforest. Ooh, nice. If you listen closely, you can hear the bamboo creaking. I love that sound. Every rose has its thorn. There's a little bee at work. Maybe a little scarier than butterflies only because you don't want to get stung. But just as beautiful and just as important to nature and the world. This is called the white powder puff. Caliandra. Okay, I was trying to say the name of this plant and a bee almost landed on me. This is called the white powder puff. Nope, nope. Not gonna finish getting the name of that tree out. It's just the white powder puff. That's all you need to know. And it's covered in bees. These are some of the largest staghorn ferns I have ever seen. We've come upon the lorikeet encounter. It's an interactive encounter. They may land on you. So if you're scared of birds landing on you, you might want to skip this one. I, however, am not afraid. Lorries and lorikeets are members of the parrot family. Many believe them to be the most beautiful as well as very intelligent. Hi, pretty birdies. Oh, I didn't mean to make you squawk at each other. You can purchase nectar for $2 and feed the lorikeets. And there's some people doing it right now. Hi. Here's where you purchase the nectar to feed them. And they're waiting. Look at these two grooming each other. Here they are getting some nectar. They are going for it. I'll get the other hand too, don't worry. Next, we'll make our way to the tropical bird aviary through the secret garden vine maze. Ooh, I love a secret garden and I love a maze. Let's go. Here we are in the secret garden vine maze. Very pretty. The vine walk contains all flowering vines. Most of these are passion vines and aristolochia vines. So let's make our way through this. 
very lovely. As you stroll the vine walk, there are signs that indicate the type of vines and flowers you're looking at, which make this not only a pretty relaxing walk, but also an educational one as well. And we made it. We made it through the vine maze. It was very, very pleasant. I liked it. So, on to the next. This tree sounds like it's alive with birds. It's probably not the best idea to be standing right under the birds. We've done the Paradise Adventure Aviary, the Hanging Gardens, the Tropical Rainforest. We did the Jewels of the Sky Aviary. We did the Vine Maze, the Lorikeet Encounter. So now we keep going back to the Butterfly Museum, Bug Zoo, and then back to the beginning. Let's go. We're about to cross the Talandia Bridge. This bridge is a replica of one spanning the Toachi River near the Tinalandia Lodge in western Ecuador. Before you cross the bridge, read this sign. Caution, the suspension bridge is designed to move. It may bounce, shake, sway, undulate, or quake as you cross it. Cross at your own risk. I've been waiting for a moment when I can cross alone because when there are a lot of people, it seems like they're shaking it around and moving. Okay, here we go. It's our moment. Let's do this. Let's do this undulating bridge. Whee! We did it. Friendly shaft tail finches may land on you in this aviary. Do not swap them. Remain calm with your hands at your sides, tilt your head forward, and they will fly away. Oh boy, that's exciting. No birds have landed on my head yet. I'm waiting. I would love for that to happen. So far, Nope, oh, no birds on my head. I'll let you know if there are any developments in the birds on the head situation. There's one right over my head. Taking a little bird bath. Hi, kitties. I'm sad to report no birds landed on my head. Maybe next time. Cool, we get to go over the bridge again undulating. Ooh, a little secret corner. I love secret corners like this. Lovely. There's some like creepy music playing here at the entrance of the museum in Bug Zoo. Let's see what's going on in here. If you are into bugs, this is probably a good place for you to visit. Let's go into the actual bug zoo where there are live bugs. Florida black scorpion. Hiding under that rock is a rose hair tarantula. Why? Why? Oh, this is horrifying. I probably need to add a warning to this video now. These are American cockroaches. Let's move along. Half hidden under this rock is a Vietnamese centipede. Fierce hunters and very aggressive towards any contact. They're nocturnal and they like to hide in damp, cool burrows. This one's called a teddy bear sun spider. And despite its cute name, well, I guess it's pretty cute. I just wouldn't want to see it out in the wild. An Asian forest scorpion. These are called super worms. I'm trying so hard not to be grossed out. All nature is beautiful. All nature is beautiful. All nature is beautiful. This is a giant flat rock scorpion. And you can see where it gets its name. It's flat and it's under a rock. It's about enough of that bug museum. Let's go back out into the sunshine and cleanse ourselves. Cleanse ourselves. And at the exit, there's a second cafe area with more seating. And then there's the butterfly garden shop where you can buy plants that attract butterflies to make your own butterfly garden at home. We've come to the end of the attraction and it's exit through the gift shop. Before you leave, you can stop at guest services and upgrade your day pass to an annual pass. Butterfly World was a lot of 
fun. It's a great activity that is very family friendly. I saw people of all ages enjoying it. It seems like a really great way to instill an appreciation of nature in kids too. There were guidebooks for sale where kids could identify the different types of butterflies and they were loving it. And the adults too. It was cool. I was kind of trying to take a peek like, what do you got there? What do you got there? Because it was really neat. I hope you guys had fun with me at Butterfly World and I hope if you're in the Fort Lauderdale area, you can work this in to your visit here. So I will see you guys for the next adventure and until then, you know what to do. Stay enthused. <laughs>